Hello, I'm Joshua Patrick Dudley, and welcome to Stabbed with Commentary. I'm the writer and the director of the first short movie that we made for StabbedMovies.com. So we wanted to continue with the theme of the Scream movies and Ghostface and all that kind of stuff to give our fans a little bit more. So after we had released Stab 4 and 5 and 6, we decided that we were going to release some short movies to give everyone a little something to hold them over until the next film came out. So right now you're watching Layla Baffigy. And her sister actually ends up in one of our movies later on, too. But you may also recognize her from Stab 7, Knife of the Hunter. And that would be me doing the ghost face voice. Good or not, that part's up to you. <laughs> we originally released this short movie with two other short movies, and we called them all the Trifecta of Terror. Uh, that footage you'll notice is from the remake of Friday the 13th. In the Stab movies, we didn't really always work in as many references to real horror movies as we wanted to, so I kind of took that opportunity to sneak another one in, and that was actually one of my favorite remakes of modern times was that Friday the 13th, just because I thought the storyline was cool, and no matter what anyone says, I like the fact that they made Jason a little more aggressive and made him run. So I love working with Layla. She's such a fantastic actress, and she had never really done anything with us before, and I believe her character's name is even Layla, too, because I wrote the part for her, and her and I used to work together at a restaurant, and we were both waiters, and we were really good friends, and I knew she had done some acting in her past in theater and stuff like that, so when she found out I was making horror movies, it was kind of natural that I would ask her to join them. So this scene is also an idea that we used for uh, part of Stab 6 originally. This was like kind of an original draft of the opening. It got edited quite a bit from what you see here, um, but it was originally, part of it was written for the script for Stab 6. And then ultimately when we decided to make the short movies, so Stabbed became our first short movie. The title was something we debated on for a while, too, because we didn't want to call it Stab Something or Stab the Short Movie, so we, we figured Stabbed was the funniest thing. So these are two other actors. Um, that's Nicole Ward that you see and Steve Dumas, um, both of who, who I also know from working at restaurants. Uh, they were both waiters with me at different restaurants. They had never really met before either, so it was kind of interesting that they play so well off of each other. The voice changer was something that I've always kind of been fascinated with since the first Scream movie. And I remember when I saw the first Scream movie, I looked everywhere for a voice changer that would make me sound like Ghostface. But we all know now that that is not possible because Ghostface is actually played by an actor. And you can't really find a voice changer to change your voice into somebody else's specific voice, even though they do do that in Scream 3. Speakerphone kind of became a big thing for us in the Stab movies, too. And this is something I've always wanted to do, a split-screen phone call. I've always kind of thought of Ghostface being on the other side, but this was great. I do wish, though, that I had continued to include the duplicated lines of her voice being disguised, because you'll notice eventually that just switches to Nicole's voice instead of having both her and the ghost voice voice mixed in. And that's because I actually had to re-record all of her lines in the ghost face voice uh, to lay under there. So it was starting to get really hard to line up with her voice and my voice. So eventually I just kind of gave up and let her side of the conversation play out on its own, like this. So it's just kind of implied that Layla's still hearing the ghost face voice on the other side and that you're only hearing Nicole's voice on this side. But I do wish I had finished them. That was a fun little thing we got to work into. Not a lot of people at this time knew that Robert Rodriguez had actually directed the stab footage in Scream 2. So that's always something that we kind of reference is that Robert Rodriguez was a director. This was another way for me to work in more modern horror references because I absolutely love that movie. So... That was a fun little nod to one of my favorite horror movies that I got to add in. This was kind of a nod to what would happen if Ghostface called somebody and they actually knew all the answers. <laughs> so that was fun for us to kind of play out that way. 
the dynamic between these two, like I said, is just, even right now to me, is kind of mind-blowing to me. It, it feels like they've known each other for years, so they're doing such a great job, and I'm so proud of them, like I said, especially considering neither one of them has any acting experience whatsoever. The idea of there being a fake knife and a real knife is something that, again, was also a plot point from Stab 6. We had a scene in Stab 6 originally that they were filming a scene and one of the girls actually got stabbed to death in front of everybody and nobody kind of caught on to that, which eventually turned into Nicole Ward's character, who is also in this movie, but her character in Stab 6 is filming a death scene and she gets stabbed to death and gets gutted in front of everybody before they figure out that she's actually dying. So it was kind of cool and it was kind of like a reference to Stab 6. It's very meta. <laughs> it all kind of connects to each other. They're both written for each other and they're kind of companions. Kind of a fill in the blanks between movies, essentially. Not anymore. I'm inside your house now. So you may also recognize this house as Stephanie or Shannon's house from Stab 6 because we did actually use this house again and it is the same exact set. It did get dressed a little bit differently for both of them. We kind of switched out some of the furniture and curtains and stuff like that to make it look like different houses. But it is actually Rachel's old house, or Rachel's family's old house, I should say. And so this is the same staircase that Stephanie got chased up in Stab 6 before she smashed Ghostface over the head with a pitcher from the wall. And you'll also notice that this door that Ghostface is about to come from is also the door that he comes from in Stab 6, but the opposite way, going into the dining room. So this is me actually playing Ghostface in this scene, and those screams are dubbed in. And even kind of that groan was kind of dubbed in after, too. And then we cut here to a different shot, so it looks like it was Steve under the costume the whole time, but it was actually me that did the killing. And I'm pretty sure it was Rachel who was filming while I was in the costume. So Rachel gets some really cool angles sometimes too. So I love getting her input on the shots. Even this shot, I love this shot right here of her coming in. Whenever I write situations like this, I really do try to imagine how people would react and respond in real life like what happens when you were pranking your friend and you accidentally killed someone like are you that scared that you can't call the cops because you're scared you're going to go to jail or do you do the right thing and call the cops and let them know that you were pranking her and you made a mistake will they believe you so when writing this that's kind of the mindset i had like it's kind of playing out in my head as if it was me and somebody else Hopefully, though, in real life, I would choose to make the right choice and call the police and let them know what happened, or at least call her an ambulance, because she might be dead now, but maybe she could be revived. They didn't even try. So, but you know, it's a horror movie, and people are supposed to make stupid decisions. <laughs> like the girl that runs up the stairs instead of going out the door. That kind of deal. So, you know, they made a bad decision. Like the teens, and I know what you did last summer when they dumped their body. But it was nice that he worked in that little pad on the back. Like, I, I, that wasn't in the script, and he actually just kind of added that in. I like that. So this was actually supposed to be more extended, and you were going to see them get killed. But instead, we just went for the jump scare and then an abrupt ending. Thank you for watching.